Hey everybody, this is my ultimate video on Hybrid Francisca. There will be no more Mulligan videos until the uh, full release of Gwent. If you haven't gotten your fix, there's a lot of unlisted footage in the description, and if you need more information on this deck, it's in the deck listing guide. So first things first, what makes a Hybrid Francisca hybrid? Well, since Mulligan doesn't have any silvers and golds to fill in those slots, you have to kind of mix and match different strategies from Scoia'tael to fill in those blank spots. I decided to mix in ambush and hand buffing because I think those things are underestimated and are really strong. Now, what are the win conditions of this deck? There are three win conditions. One is bamboozling your opponent with Illyrian. Illyrian will pop out as we see here, when five elves are on the board. And Teruvial, when she flips over at the end of the round, your opponent can't really play around this, uh, it'll pull out Illyrian and you'll have more points than your opponent expects. Now this doesn't always go your way, but when it does, it can be extremely potent in beating your opponent. The second win condition is Siri right here. Siri uh, tempts your opponent when you're ahead pass the round. There are a lot of decks that do a lot of setup in round one, and so you can out-tempo your opponent a little bit with this deck, since it has several tempo plays with Francisca, the uh, Elven War Dancers pulling Illyrian out sometimes if you need to out-tempo your opponent. Make sure you don't force the bamboozle combo. If you... Uh, <laughs> you're afraid that you need to keep that point advantage on the board, in order to win the round or control your opponent's decisions. So Siri is a great way to win round one and then be able to focus on Dragoons in round two. Because your opponent doesn't want to go three cards disadvantage against you if they can help it. Finally, we're going to do a uh, the last, the end, this is your round three win condition. After doing the bamboozling or the Siri in round one or two. That is getting all these vanguards out, and you can do that with Azure's Double Cross, stuff like that, and that helps you get them out. When you're mulliganing in the beginning, you don't really want the vanguards in your hand or have too many vanguards in your hand. You want to have as many silvers and golds as possible, except for Saskia, of course, or an Illyrian. You can also buff Illyrian um, in your hand and then mulligan her out through Francisca, and that's another option if you want to do extra bamboozling. Last but not least, there is Bran, or Brain, <laughs> Bran. Uh, you buff her up a bunch with the uh, Hawker supports and then you're pretty golden, I think. Uh, I've pushed her out of my hand with the Mulligan and then pulled her back onto the board with the Zuer's Double Cross. Since she's going to keep the buffs you give her when she's Mulliganed out and the extra base strength will make her effect all the stronger. Without further ado, we're going to do uh, a few showcases of the strategy, and then at the very end, and if you want to skip to that, there will be a comment with that skip, <laughs> where we will look at uh, raw gameplay. Okay, I want to showcase what it looks like to bamboozle your opponent. This is the middle of playing against Calve, uh, which is a very focused right now on winning round one with his Emperor Brigades. So I'm going to pull his his cow carcass up to the melee row and kill off my Elven War Dancer, but that's not really the focus here. I wasn't sure exactly if my opponent was going to pass this round. That's why you don't see both of your goods onto the board. I'm actually really happy my opponent's playing Emissaries. If you count the, car, uh, the number of Elves on the board, it's three. So if I play my Isengrim now, I will have five Elves on the board. And when Teruvial flips, she will pull Illyrian. If my opponent has... Okay, 
If my opponent has Ox, he should have played it then, but he doesn't, so I'm just going to pass here. I, I'm winning the round, so there's no real reason to continue pushing this. So I pass. My opponent only thinks I have a six point Teruvial on the board. So he's going to just revive something. He's going to put it up there. He's going to play an Emperor Brigade. He thinks he's won the round. Because I have, all I have is a six point Teruvial, or a, um, at worst, a Sapper. But he doesn't know that I am actually going to pull Illyrian and win the round. And I'm going to have card advantage now. Since this is Nilfgaard, what are they going to do? They're going to probably just, you know, like, there's not much that Nilfgaard could do after they lose their round one win condition. Like that. Okay. Now that we've covered how you bamboozle your opponent, we're going to cover a full game, and we're going to look at how you win the third round. Because you're not always going to be able to bamboozle your opponent like that. And I have countless examples where the bamboozle didn't go the way I planned. So this is the most recent version of the deck, the one I showcased in the beginning of the video. I'm definitely having to make decisions on what I want on the board. I fortunately drew into some of my best cards, but even if I didn't, I have Francisca, so I'm allowed to reorganize my hand the way I need to. So my opponent's playing Bear Axeman kind, uh, variant of Skellige that everybody knows about. I know a lot of you guys like it when I play against them and show them who's boss. If I know my opponent's playing bears, I can either just play units that won't get hit by the bears, or I could alternatively... This is actually scaring me a bit. There's so many bears <laughs> on the board. But I'm going to just buff up Bran and just be done with it. I have no vanguards in my hand because I don't... When I'm playing uh, Mulligan, I want to have as few vanguards in my starting hand so I can play a long round one if that need be because they're not going to be all that strong until... Well, until I use Francisca, that is. I want to have good... Mulligan targets. So I decide to play Isengrim here. It's kind of a scary thing. Because I'm thinking I'm going to try to do the bamboozle if I can. And plus, neither of these cards are going to get hit by the bears. So that's great. Now, if I had played Morin, I would also be prepared for this next card a little bit. But, in reality, it doesn't matter. It is important to note that the Shackles removes the Elf status from my card. So as far as my opponent's concerned, it is no longer an Elf. Uh, <laughs> as far as the game's concerned, it's no longer an Elf card. Unfortunately, trying to lock a uh, Morin is not a good idea. Or, well, he wasn't trying to lock Morin. He was trying to lock... Uh, the Dragoon, because the Dragoon is really important in this matchup. I see, I'm contemplating whether or not I want to play Yavin. Says Yavin is a safe card to play. So I'm definitely going to throw out the Ward answer. I'm definitely going to push out Illyrian. And I'm going to push out the Brigade. Now the, the Brigade's an issue. It's important to know that Illyrian will go back onto the board if you mulligan her out. And you have five Elves. My five Elves other than Illyrian. 
Oh. I'm actually confused exactly how to do the math here. Because uh, I only see four that are not locked. It's complicated. Sometimes I don't get Illyrian either. So, like I said, Siri is a excellent win condition for round one if you want to force your opponent to pass. As you can see, my opponent has three bears on the board. If I play this round out any longer, I'm going to have issues. But my opponent would have to have a huge amount of points to catch up from this point. Because they decided to use decoy for, at, like, for three points of value. So they didn't really get any tempo out of it. And I had a lot of hyper tempo in this round. I played three gold cards. I still have Regis Higher Vampire, but I don't need to play that this round. So now my opponent's contemplating how they want to win this round. Okay. So I use Siri as a win condition. It's very important to think about her that way. Because it can manipulate your opponent into giving you exactly what you want. Now, you might see me look at my opponent's graveyard over and over again. That's because he's gotten a lot of cards from my deck thrown in there. By decoying Donner. And so I want to see if he's pulled any of my vanguards. Now, you might say, well, why are you getting so lucky and you're getting all of your vanguards into your uh, hand and none of them are going to his graveyard. I have 15 bronze units. So s statistically speaking, it is fairly unlikely for Donar to randomly hit my vanguards, especially right now when I have two of them in my hand. Again, I'm going to go check his deck because he's thrown three of my units in there. He's thrown both of my brigades. I have no weather clear anymore. I'm going to buff up Bran again. I don't really care about the weather, so if my opponent's playing weather, that actually makes no sense to me. So I always pull out Azur's Double Cross with Yavin, because he shows me a special and a unit. And since I only have one special in the deck, Azur's Double Cross is a guaranteed pull. So you could, that's also a safe silver to mulligan out of your hand if you don't want it. Okay. Now I'm definitely going to pass, because, like, what's the point? Playing this out. I have a lot of points in my hand. Okay. So I drew into all my win condition cards. I'm going to mulligan out Bran. Why? Because Bran's going to be pulled with Azur's double cross, guaranteed. And the higher strength it has, the better... Uh, Rain, Rain does. I'm gonna say your name like a bajillion different ways this game, aren't I? <laughs> there aren't really any other cards I want from my deck, so Dragoon is actually really good. It's not necessary to win this because I don't know how my opponent could beat me. Like I'm not going to be, I'm not going to play a lot of units to the same row because I have vanguards, and if my opponent doesn't play a bear. I can just play, yeah, he decides to play his Axeman. So that means I'm safe to play my Dragoon without it going into red strength. Unfortunately, my opponent has a Fighting Frost. Now I'm going to try to play as many of my units out on the board as soon as possible because not that I'm afraid of weather, but rather I'm afraid of my opponent's getting um i'm afraid of my opponent reviving certain cards and all that junk i decided to get rid of the axeman now i could have probably waited one more turn but i didn't want to risk it
because my opponent might be able to revive a bear or something and mess up the whole strategy. Now, I want to eat out one of his shield maidens here. Now, that could have been bad if he doesn't have any shield maidens in his hand, but I'm expecting him to have one. So, I'd rather get rid of it now and reduce the amount of points he can pull onto the board. Unfortunately, he doesn't have one. But even if he did, I would have won. I think. I'm pretty sure I would have. <laughs> I've been really close. Let's say it that way. If he had uh, had a shield made in his hand. Hey everybody, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I got a little lucky against my opponent, but they also got lucky against me too. So, the luck goes both ways. And speaking about Skellige, I usually win against Skellige unless it is a combi deck, in which case I have a little bit of trouble. Since my I have these big units at the, on the board at the end of the game and they just get eliminated. Now, speaking about the future, I think Scoia'tael is going to see some love in the next patch, so I think everybody would behoove themselves to learn more about the different things Scoia'tael can do other than spell Scoia'tael. And to really hammer this home, the next deck I'm going to be showcasing will be a movement-focused Enya deck. So, I already did a prototype of this deck, but I've gotten more cards to experiment with, and I think you guys are going to find it really fun. So, have a great day, and time for the outro. Like and subscribe, leave a comment too, I really like it, I will hope you have a good day.